So lately it seems Prime Video has not even been trying. Amazon has been investing more in its free streaming service Freebie and has not been putting really anything of note on Prime Video for months. But in March, that has all changed. They just added a ton of fantastic movies and there's some new original projects coming later in the month and some of the biggest movies of 2022 are also coming to Prime Video this month. This video is sponsored by Skillshare, but before telling you about them, I wanna tell you about all the great movies that they just recently added on March 1st. If you didn't know, Creed 3 just hit theaters. You can go see it right now, but you can also catch Creed 1 and Creed 2 on Prime and every single Rocky movie. That's Rocky 1 through 5 and Rocky Balboa. So it's a great time to binge watch all of these movies. It's very rare that I see every single one of them, including Creed 1 and 2, available in one place. They also added a ton of highly rewatchable classics, movies like Dazed and Confused. I don't care who you are or what generation you're from, this movie never gets old. You can watch it as many times as you want and all the lines are relevant and fun. A movie that is the complete opposite of fun, though, is Leaving Las Vegas. This is a downer of a movie, honestly one of the most depressing movies I've ever seen, but it's propped up with an incredible performance from Nicolas Cage, easily one of his career's best, and not just because he won an Oscar for it, he really does tear it up in this movie, making it highly rewatchable in my book, not to mention Elizabeth Shue is just dynamite in this movie in more ways than one. 12 Angry Men, the original movie, is one that I think everyone needs to see in their life. I mean, this story really helped shape the way I view law and order and judgment in America and really in the world at large. The story does such an expert job of explaining how things are not always what they seem. It really is an important movie if you're maybe one of my younger viewers and you've never seen it. Definitely check it out and try to watch it with some intention. Ridley Scott's American Gangster comes to Prime Video, an incredible epic gangster movie, something that sort of disappeared for a while. Ridley Scott brought this back, and it's not just Ridley Scott. I mean, Denzel Washington is giving a killer performance, so is Josh Brolin. Idris Elba even has a cool little role in here as well, and of course Russell Crowe is really fantastic in this movie, and it's got an incredible look. If it's been a while since you've seen it, I promise you this movie holds up better than you would expect. And then one of Ron Howard's more underrated movies gets added, Cinderella Man. This also stars Russell Crowe and I think is easily one of his most underrated movies. Not only is it just top notch all the way through, it's a fantastic story. It's also one of those sports stories where you need to have no interest in the sport to thoroughly enjoy it. You also get all these depression era themes. It's easily one of the best movies they're gonna be adding all month. If you've never seen Cinderella Man, I highly recommend it. Guy Ritchie just had Operation Fortune hit theaters and his first movie is also coming to Prime. Lock, Stock and Two Smoking Barrels, a long time personal favorite of mine. This got me into him as a director and I've loved almost everything he's made since. However, if you're not used to watching English movies like these that are full of slang, you might wanna watch this with the subtitles on. However, I'm not sure that that's gonna really help you that much either. He then orders an Aristotle of the most ping pong tiddly in the nuclear sub. If you love weird movies, they're gonna be adding Being John Malkovich, one I have loved for decades and have not seen in quite a while. So March might be a good time for me to revisit this oddball gem from the mind of Charlie Kaufman. Midnight Cowboy is another classic from 1969 that still holds up today. A lot of the themes still work today and the performances from both John Voight and Dustin Hoffman are incredible. I mean, this movie is a highly celebrated movie. I'm not just discovering it here, but if you've never seen it, I promise you this movie's got more surprises in it than you would expect and really does hold up much better than most movies from 1969. But from 1968, my favorite Western of all time, hands down, and I love me some Westerns, is Once Upon a Time in the West. Now, director Sergio Leone is most famous for the good, the bad, and the ugly, but he also did the entire Dollars trilogy. However, I love Once Upon a Time in the West. I think it's got easily one of the best openings in a movie ever, but certainly in a Western. And then you've got these amazing grizzled characters from Henry Fonda and Charles Bronson. And even though the movie's very long-winded and sort of slow-paced, it is just one of my favorite experiences watching a Western from beginning to end. If you've never seen Once Upon a Time in the West, though, and you generally like my recommendations, 
mark it on your calendar for March and try to watch it when you can really dedicate the full three hours to it and give it your full attention because it really is a true gem that deserves to be watched. And I'm not done with everything that they just added. They're also bringing back Pulp Fiction, a classic that almost everybody loves. I will say, I recently re-watched it in a setting where I was very into it here in this theater and I forget how solid and entertaining the dialogue is in that movie. If you feel like you've maybe seen it too many times to enjoy it, I promise you, Pulp Fiction holds up to multiple viewings better than most things on this list and that's really saying something. However, if you just want to turn your brain off and watch an action movie that you probably missed from the early 2000s, try checking out Sahara with Matthew McConaughey. Now this is a silly PG-13 far-fetched action movie that is kind of dumb, but is really fun to watch. It's got a cool soundtrack, it's got some fun stunt sequences that are real and done kind of in an old school way, and Matthew McConaughey is just entertaining no matter what he does. Some other classics include Scent of a Woman. I don't I show you out of order. You don't know what out of order is, Mr. Trask. I'd show you, but I'm too old. They're also adding one of my favorite Christopher Walken movies, Stephen King's The Dead Zone. Don't give me any arguments. The ice is gonna break. And I would say The Machinist with Christian Bale would make a fantastic double feature to The Dead Zone. I think Vanilla Sky is a highly underrated movie starring Tom Cruise with plenty of twists and turns. It too is well over two hours and can be a little bit grueling to watch, but there's a lot of layers there and especially with the way technology in the world is headed. I also think it's kind of an important movie. Not a majorly important one, but a little bit. Definitely check it out if you've never seen this one. It's cool stuff. And then they're also adding, and I can't believe they are, The Last Temptation of Christ. Now this is one I don't know I've ever seen available on a streaming service, but my goodness, was this one of the most controversial movies ever released back when Martin Scorsese originally directed it. Just like Scorsese, I too was raised Catholic, and I actually like the way that this story pans out. I mean, the points that are made throughout this movie are pretty fantastic. It is a little odd seeing Willem Dafoe play Jesus Christ, but he also manages to make it work. If you can get into this one and look past some weird things like Harvey Keitel with red curly hair, there are some incredible layers here. Again, this is Martin Scorsese, and this is something he had wanted to tell the world for a while. So if you're not Catholic or you're not easily offended, I highly recommend checking this one out, but just know that it pushed more boundaries than one. Now, speaking of pushing boundaries, I do want to tell you about today's sponsor, Skillshare. Now, if you're going to take advice like this from anybody, you might as well take it from somebody who figured out how to literally spend their time watching movies for a living. I mean, I became a full-time professional YouTuber about three years ago, and I'm completely self-taught when it comes to editing and video production. And you can create new career possibilities with Skillshare and learn how to design a career like mine that suits you. Because Skillshare features countless skills that help you forge a new career path, skills like time management, and personal branding, which is important in my field. And even though it seems like I've got everything figured out, I'm actually taking a Skillshare class now titled Marketing Your Brand or Business with Video, and it's helping me a lot. I don't know if you've noticed, but the channel is growing. And right now, you can explore the entire Skillshare library for free for a full month when you use my link in the video description below and sign up for a free trial. And Skillshare is most known for their creative courses, courses like photography, video production, and illustration, but they also have a bunch of career-focused courses that are gonna help you reinvent yourself in 2023. So again, go to the link in the description. You'll get a free month when you sign up for that free trial. It's a fantastic way to improve your lifestyle, but speaking of fantastic stuff, let's get on with the new movies coming to Prime Video this month. Now, at the time of me releasing this video, Prime Video just released Daisy Jones and the Six. I have not seen it yet, but this looks like a top-notch production. If you love rock and roll movies, movies like Almost Famous, this looks like an exceptional one. I like a lot of the key cast members involved. Reese Witherspoon is attached as a producer, and it looks visually stunning. If you've got the least bit of an affinity for anything sort of 70s or rock and roll, this, again, looks like a top-notch production. 
on Prime Video and only Prime Video. On the 6th, they're going to be adding The Magnificent Seven, which is not a fantastic remake, but it does have an all-star cast and is a pretty good production. I'm still a sucker for the original and love Seven Samurai, which these are based on, even more than the American Western. The 10th brings Jackass Forever. That is the latest Jackass movie with new cast members involved. Something I did not think was going to work, but if you haven't noticed, all of the uh, original members are getting up there in age. They're starting to gray up just like I am and their bodies can't take the punishment anymore. So they brought in some new recruits and I know I'm almost 40, but this stuff is still just as funny as ever to me. Something that is definitely not going to be funny though, on the 17th they're adding a new series called Swarm. Now this is co-created by Donald Glover. Some of you know him as Childish Gambino. He also created the show Atlanta and is really just kind of a juggernaut of entertainment. He's got hit albums, comedy specials, TV shows, and now he's trying his hand at horror. They are not your friends. Those are some crazy ass fans. Dominique Fishback from Judas and the Black Messiah stars in this. I thought she was fantastic in that movie. And so I'm interested to see what she does with an incredibly creepy role like the one in Swarm. She plays a young woman obsessed with a Beyonce style pop star. And it looks like it goes into some incredibly grim directions. Now when they're secretive, the way that they have been with Swarm, it means one of two things. It's either going to be excellent or a total turd, but you can guarantee it's probably at either end of the spectrum. I for one am definitely going to be checking it out because so far Donald Glover has not let me down. But speaking of funny black guys that turn to horror, Jordan Peele's latest movie, Nope, is going to be hitting Prime very soon. Now this had mixed reviews. I know some people didn't like it. I honestly don't understand why. This movie hit on so many notes. It was so interesting in so many different ways and most importantly showed me things I've never seen in any movie ever and quite a few of the scenes are just expertly directed by Jordan Peele. He really is one of the most interesting directors on the scene today and even though Nope didn't garner all the awards attention the way that Get Out did, I think this is still a fun, wild ride of a movie that has solid themes that carry throughout. I'm not going to spoil this movie if you haven't seen it yet and you generally like my weirder recommendations, go into this one expecting to like it, but having no expectations as to what you're going to see and I guarantee you most of you are going to have a blast with Nope. However, on the 24th, they're going to be adding a movie I honestly don't understand how anybody doesn't love, Top Gun Maverick. Now, I'm not going to gush about this movie too much. I'm not suggesting that it's the new Godfather or anything silly like that. It's an action movie. In fact, this is very much the same formula as the last few Mission Impossible movies, which I've loved all of those as well. But Top Gun Maverick did several things perfectly. One, they nailed the nostalgia element. There's plenty of that Tony Scott nostalgia from the original transplanted directly into this movie and it works. I think a lot of people enjoyed that nostalgic element and it didn't seem forced or cheesy. It seemed to respect the original and it's good. That part, I think they nailed. They introduced new characters fairly well but above all of that, the flying you're seeing in this movie is 100% real. When you see jets, they are actually flying that low to the ground. Yes, I know the actors are sitting in the back of these F-18s, but it is still real. And I think younger audiences in particular don't quite understand the difference between a movie like this and a movie like Avengers that is a basically an animated movie. And that's how most action movies are made today. It's all fake and done as easily and as safely as possible. Top Gun Maverick threw all that out the window, went back to some old school stunt style filmmaking. The same thing Tom Cruise has been doing for a while now. 
but they're doing it in F-18s and it is a blast to watch on top of just being a solid story with incredible tension and it's just, again, that last 30 minutes of this movie is gonna be hard to top for a while. If you haven't seen it yet, hopefully I didn't oversell it, but man, what a fun movie. Now to immediately prove I'm not a movie snob, my next recommendation comes on the 29th, Valerian in the City of a Thousand Planets. This is a movie that's almost completely animated and it's still a fun, wild ride. Now I will say Valerian in the City of a Thousand Planets loses the plot a bit, it's a little bit hard to follow and story-wise gets a little bit messy, which keeps it from being just a top-notch recommendation, but it's still a visual feast, it's got some fun action sequences in it, and it never loses the plot quite so much that it turned me off as a viewer. This is one I've watched more than once and have recommended more than once here on the channel. And then finally on the 31st, they're adding a new series called The Power. Tony Collette actually stars in this, but the series revolves around a group of teenage girls that have developed a superpower that allows them to electrocute things and other people. Now, I've seen a lot of shows about people with superpowers, but never one quite as focused as this with such a specific power. So I'm curious to see how they expand upon that, if they make it really interesting, or if this is something that's kind of made for teenagers. We'll see later this month, but here is everything Prime Video added this month. If I sound excited, it really is because they have not been adding much and I honestly thought they were kind of going to stop adding things. So I'm excited to see a month like this where they dump a bunch of great stuff to watch. Hopefully you found some good things to check out. Thanks to Skillshare for sponsoring another video. Definitely go check out their link in the description below. I highly recommend their service, but I will keep making these videos as long as you keep watching them. Thanks for checking out this Prime Video episode and you will see me on the next one.